it's seven o'clock and I am very happy to welcome you all to another one of SDS Thursdays which we've started uh, last year I think in April or end of March as we've gone into the first lockdown and uh, now we are all hopeful hoping for better things to come, the vaccination to be effective, uh, lockdown being easing a little bit, but we are still meeting on here on Zoom on Thursdays because we've discovered that actually it's a very, very good way of bringing you all together from all over the country and from all over the world. And uh, it will, this sort of audience, we will never be able to welcome in one room I think uh, no matter where we book that room so we are continuing with Thursdays and just today I've updated the calendar of SDS Thursdays on our website under the news items you can see SDS calendar SDS Thursdays calendar for 2021 and I've updated them um, up to November so you can go and have a look at the plans we have for Thursdays up to November. And it is actually very busy. We struggled accommodating everything in uh, <clears throat> this in the calendar, but I think we've managed all right. So we are continuing with them and up to November, you've got the calendar. Today, we are very happy to welcome Professor Nuna Ferreira, who has presented at Thursdays already a couple of times. He was one of the very first people who responded to our call to do these free presentations. All our presenters are doing them completely free for you. So that that is something very uh, commendable to, to acknowledge. So um, Nuno already talked to you about ACT and COVID and uh, presented, as I said, a couple of times for us. And today uh, he is presenting because he is running uh, an advanced course on ACT for us in June. And I'll share my screen quickly to show you how to find that course and to let you know a little bit more about, about it. Right, I think this is, I think this is the right one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we, uh, as you know, and I think uh, Nuno will confirm that, that um, there's no formal accreditation for acceptance and commitment therapy, as far as I know. And we have made an attempt to sort of start that process to in some way, because uh, as you know, our certificate uh, in acceptance and commitment therapy is approved by BPS. And it consists of several stages, uh, which will enable you to familiarize yourself with this modality much, much uh, at greater depth. So it starts with two day introductory course, which many of you I'm sure did live with Nunu when we were delivering it in London and maybe did online as well. But if you haven't done it yet, you can book it as a recording in preparation for the three-day advance course. And then this is three-day advance uh, ACT practitioners toolkit and how to use it. It's incredibly practical, but what's important to remember that Nunu doesn't repeat the information from the introductory course on this three-day course. So it is genuinely a next step in your training in acceptance and commitment therapy. And then you're passing an exam to receive your full certificate. Um, however, we're planning to, we're discussing with Nunu further steps, maybe further master classes and supervision. So you can actually feel that your practice in acceptance and commitment therapy is up to scratch and um, meeting all the standards. I think somebody's microphone is on, Paul, if you can mute them, please. 
So that's, that's the layout of the course. And this particular um, three-day ACT Practitioner's Toolkit and how to use it is running on the 15th to 17th of June. It's three full-day courses on Zoom. It's very experiential, lots of group work, and Nunu is jumping from group to group and gives you advice. So it is a very, very... A uh, helpful course, and we've had, I think I've got it here, a, a very, very good feedback from a recent event which Nuno was delivering for an NHS organization who booked this training with us. So you can check that on our website. And I genuinely can say we only have four places left. So if you want to book that course, book it now because it's only four places we've got available on that particular course. So um, that's all from me, and I'll pass the microphone to Paul, although I think Nunu probably doesn't require much introduction, but there will be new people in the group, so probably if you could introduce him again, please, Paul. You need to unmute yourself. Right, welcome folks. Um, uh, yeah, let me just say um, a few words about Nunu for those of you that haven't uh, met him or worked with him before. Um, we've been working with Nunu now for, for a few years and I guess that um, there's a couple of things that I would like to sort of highlight about him, both in terms of his background and his training. Um, we first started working with Nunu when he was working um, at uh, Edinburgh University. Um, and where he was doing uh, research on ACT in relation to uh, general medical health problems. He um, he's now a professor of clinical health psychology at the University of Nicosia, and uh, he continues his specific interest in, in two aspects which come together extraordinarily well um, in the times that we actually live in. He has obviously a specialist knowledge and background in working with ACT, acceptance and commitment therapy, but he's, I would say, probably one of the very few people in the world who has got extensive experience of applying ACT to general medical problems and particularly to problems which relate to chronic health conditions or long-term health conditions. And as I'm sure you're aware, um, we have um, a number of um, chronic um, health conditions that we're dealing with in society generally, whether we're talking about diabetes uh, and so on and so forth, or obesity, but also this is particularly relevant at this particular point in time with what appears to be a growing epidemic that is going to be hitting us um, very soon, if it's not already started for you, with regards to the effects of long COVID. Um, although the actual length of this is not yet clear, it is, by, it is clearly an ongoing problem um, and in that respect is a real issue, I think, for so many of us and so many of our clients uh, to actually be tackling. So without any further ado, I will hand you over to Nunu and um, I would simply say enjoy uh, your time with this man. He's, he's, he's a very special treat and I'm looking forward to, to hearing him again myself. Over to you, Nunu. Okay, thank you very much, Paul, and uh, good evening, everyone. Um, uh, I would like to say I'm, I'm, I'm calling from sunny Cyprus, but it's actually two hours ahead, so it's, uh, it's already quite dark out uh, by now. Um, but cer certainly nice and, uh, nice and, uh, and warm. Um, uh, so today, um, for, this, uh, for this session, we, you know, I was thinking about you know, what could be something that would be useful uh, to talk about that would be sort of a, a short, uh, you know, a, sort of a short introduction that could sort of touch upon different aspects of ACT. So I thought of uh, talking about one of the uh, things that we use the most in ACT, which are um, uh, metaphors and specifically a certain type of metaphors. Um, so let me just share my screen. Oh, sorry, uh, Julia, I think you need to uh, allow me to share screen. Yep, okay, let me see, there we go. All right. Okay, so I thought about talking about one of the classic 
uh, metaphors uh, enact the uh, the passengers on the bus. So uh, for those of you who might have uh, already dabbled a bit or dipped your toes in act, you've probably seen uh, or heard about the passengers uh, on the bus uh, metaphor. Um, but we'll, we'll go into a bit more depth uh, into, uh, into what, uh, what this metaphor looks like, what it is about, what, what's it doing in the context of, uh, of ACT. So the passengers on the bus is part of these organizing metaphors. And why do we call them organizing uh, metaphors? Uh, basically because they do serve multiple purposes and they sort of, you know, uh, go around the, you know, the, the different houses of the, of the model uh, in ACT, whether, uh, whether we're talking about the psychological inflexibility uh, processes, so things like uh, cognitive fusion, experiential avoidance, uh, dominance of past and future, attachment to conceptualize self, lack of clarity or contact with values and avoidant behavior. So it sort of touches upon uh, all of those, but at the same time, it also touches on the psychological flexibility processes that we are trying to ferment and instigate uh, when we are uh, engaging people in, a, uh, in an ACT uh, therapeutic um, uh, relationship. So uh, getting people to sort of stay more in the, in the present moment, take this observer self perspective, um, being able to diffuse, uh, i.e., you know, they take a bit of perspective and distance from uh, their experiences. Uh, again, instigating and fomenting this sort of a stance of acceptance and willingness, uh, whilst moving towards values and valued uh, and valued actions. So, <clears throat> organizing metaphors tend to. Uh, you know, do things like point at these inflexibility processes, probably in sort of broader terms. So things like, um, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the sort of the, the type of agenda that the, um, uh, the client might be engaging in, uh, which usually tends to be sort of a control agenda, trying to control certain uh, internal experiences. Uh, it also points uh, at things like the lack of workability of this type uh, of agenda. So when this is really not serving uh, a purpose in the person's uh, in the person's life, uh, and also the sort of the, the costs that come attached uh, to this uh, control agenda that usually leads to this sort of uh, experiential avoidance or avoidant behavior. So what are people sort of uh, missing out uh, as part of uh, being engaged uh, with this uh, with this uh, inflexibility and control agenda? Uh, and at the same time, organizing metaphors sort of flip the switch and sort of pivot uh, towards, uh, okay, so if this isn't working, that what would work? And then sort of sort of pivot towards the psychological flexibility processes. Depending on the organizing metaphor, they might do it with a focus more uh, on values, on acceptance, on present moment awareness. Again, it depends. And today we'll see what the uh, passengers on the bus uh, metaphor is doing in terms of uh, these processes. Finally, the, 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 the great thing of uh, using organizing metaphors is that they can be used as a way to share uh, a formulation with, uh, with the client. So without having some sort of, you know, uh, formulaic thing like, you know, presenting, oh, here you go, you're being very experiential avoidant there kind of thing. So we can use, again, a, a sort of a common language, a common communication uh, that points at the processes without naming the processes. So getting an experiential sense of these processes. Uh, and that also doesn't get bogged down on content. So uh, it can apply to all sorts of different content and all sorts of um, uh, different internal experiences and sort of use a common language to, uh, to, to, to sort of refer to those experiences and to create some of these processes of psychological flexibility that we're trying to, to activate. So let's, for those of you who don't know the uh, passengers on the bus uh, metaphor, I found this, uh, there's uh, these uh, brilliant videos from, uh, that were developed by uh, University College uh, Dublin. They actually have it almost as a game uh, kind of things, uh, sort of, uh, I don't know if, uh, if people used to, 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 to play those or to read those uh, fantastic adventure books where you, you know, you read a chapter and at the end of the chapter, you had to make a choice kind of thing. So it's the same type uh, of logic, 
uh, and it uses the, the the passengers on the bus metaphor uh, with that logic to sort of uh, illustrate uh, the, the whole metaphor. So uh, rather than me continue talking, I'll show you uh, some of these videos and the sort of uh, I've organized them in a way where uh, you can see sort of uh, the, the navigation throughout the different aspects of uh, the metaphor. So hopefully, uh, sorry, I think I might need to um, let me just make sure that I when I share That's not it, sorry. I'm just trying to make sure that. Hmm. Okay, let's hope, hopefully this will come across. Do let me know if you're, uh, if you can't hear uh, any of the videos. I uh, just a uh, very brief reference. So the, the passengers on the bus metaphor, if you want to see it in, um, in, um, in reading format, you can find it on the original uh, Hayes, Trussell and uh, Wilson uh, book on ACT uh, from 1999. I think the, even the more, the more recent one also has it, but this was definitely sort of the, the first appearance that the, 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 where, the, where the metaphor was sort of, uh, uh, where you can find the metaphor. So let's see if this works. So do let me know if, the, uh, if you can't hear uh, the content. So we'll start here uh, on the passengers on the bus. No sound. No sound. Okay. So let me see. Julia, I don't know if you can help me. How do we share sound as well? Uh, ah, there we go. And optimize for video clip. I found it. Sorry. There you go. So hopefully now it will come across. From acceptance and commitment therapy, specifically the passengers on the bus metaphor. You'll be invited to make decisions that will either bring you closer towards what matters or keep you stuck in loop lane. Think Black Mirror Bandersnatch, but slightly less dystopian. At the end of each video, you'll be presented with two options. Simply click the option you want to progress. If you're viewing via a laptop, computer, or tablet, these options will be presented at the end screen. If you're viewing via a phone, then you may need to scroll down to the video description tab to make your choice. And now, without further ado, drumroll please! No, really, this is all about engagement. Drum roll, please. Let's go. Imagine that you are the driver of a bus along the road of your life. And things are generally pretty good in your bus. You stay the course and have well-behaved passengers. One day, you spot a new place that you'd like to go. And excitedly, you turn the bus towards this new destination. However, Soon you notice that some passengers on the bus start to become rowdy. They stand up and make noise, demanding you change course back to the other path. What do you think you're doing? demands one of the passengers. You'll never be able for this route. Yeah, says another passenger, and you don't deserve to go this way. Turn back right now. When you don't comply, they get louder and more obnoxious using name-calling and threatening language to get you to change course away from this new destination. The closer you get to the new destination, the more obnoxious and threatening they become. Okay, here's the space to make your first choice. Do you have a scrap and fight with the passengers or try to compromise and reason with them? Okay, so for the sake of, uh, of facilitating choice, let's say you fight the passengers. So let's see what happens when you fight the passengers. You've chosen to fight with the passengers. 
You slam your foot on the brakes and the bus screeches to a sudden halt. You turn to face the passengers and let out a tremendous roar. The passengers seem unfazed and continue complaining. Shut up, you cry, but it doesn't work and the passengers grow louder. One passenger makes their way to the front and begins to speak. You don't even know what you're doing. What, do you think you could take on all of us? Try push me off this bus and see what happens, mate. The other passengers nod aggressively. You hate to admit it, but he's right. There's no way you could beat him in a fight, let alone the rest of the passengers. And besides, your bus has been stationary for some time now. You've made no progress in your journey. Well, says one passenger, you could take us where we want to go. I'm sure everyone would settle down if you did. Or you could just listen to me instead. I'm much more positive. I think you're doing great. Who needs all those negative Nancys? You cover your ears and try to think. You could just listen to the kind passenger. Or you could placate all the passengers and drive where they want. What would you like to do? Again, let's say that you placate the passengers. You've chosen to placate the passengers and drive where they want. All right, all right, you shout to the passengers. I give in. Let's go where you lot want. You take a breath and turn back towards the steering wheel. You steer away from the new route and onto Loop Lane. The passengers quieten down and take their seats again. Ah, peace. Isn't this what you wanted? The passengers aren't bothering you now. Surely this is a satisfying end of the adventure. And yet, as you drive past the familiar streets, you notice a sinking feeling in your chest. This doesn't feel right, does it? You wanted to go towards the new path. However, you know that if you do, the passengers will become rowdy again, yelling at you to turn back. Maybe you could rush to your destination, driving so fast that the passengers can't bother you. Or maybe you could drown them all out with music. What would you like to do? Let's say we're going to rush to the destination. You've chosen to rush to your destination, driving so fast that the passengers can't bother you. You slam your foot in the gas and the bus lurches forward. The passengers are thrown about with the sheer force of the jolt. You grip the steering wheel tightly as the bus hurtles carelessly down the street. Despite bouncing around, the passengers manage to continue complaining growing louder and louder as you increase the speed and get closer to what matters. Watch it, driver. This speed is dangerous, says one passenger. You grit your teeth and try to focus on the road ahead. The passenger is right. One slip could cause a major accident. Your shoulders tense and your heart feels like it's beating out of your chest. This doesn't feel right, does it? You don't even have time to appreciate your surroundings on this new route. You ease your foot off the gas. Rushing isn't working. You pause to think. What have you tried so far? Notice the cost of these strategies and how they haven't sustainably taken you closer towards what matters. Are you open to trying something different? Maybe you could try sitting with the passengers, not fighting, struggling, or trying to change them, just allowing them to be. Okay, so let's see what happens when we sit with the passengers. You have chosen. Okay. You take a breath and give it a try, seeing what it feels like to just allow the passengers without fighting, struggling, or trying to change them. You notice the tension and tightness in your body lift as you drop the struggle. The passengers are still here, but accepting both their presence and your inability to control them gives you space to divert your attention from them reducing their impact and influence. And remember, sometimes the passengers have a point. For example, sometimes they're trying to alert you to danger. As best you can, when you notice a passenger trying to get your attention, tune into your body and explore whether their advice takes you closer towards what matters or keeps you stuck in loop lane. You take a deep breath and slowly ease your foot down on the gas. The bus moves forward edging closer towards the new destination. The closer you get, the louder the passengers become, demanding you change course. 
Thanks for your input, passengers, you say. I'm going to explore this new path. You turn onto the new path and move closer towards what matters. So the rowdy passengers represent unwanted thoughts and feelings that show up for many of us when we take steps towards the things we care about. Practicing acceptance can help you respond more effectively to your passengers, acknowledging them without devoting all your attention to them. Notice that your thoughts don't need to dictate your actions. You are the driver. Notice that although the passengers can seem quite threatening, they cannot harm you. You have the power to choose how you respond to your passengers. You have the power to take small steps towards doing what matters to you, regardless of what your passengers say. Thank you for playing our Choose Your Own Adventure. We hope it was useful. All great adventures have a theme song. So now for your final choice, we invite you to select a theme song for your adventure. Okay, we're not going to do the, the theme song, folks. But um, basically, what you can see here in terms of what the, the metaphor uh, is doing, uh, and probably this last bit at the end where, you know, uh, where we're using the symbolic um, uh, the symbolism of the passengers as being uh, some of the internal struggles that our clients uh, might be um, uh, might be having, uh, some of those internal experiences, whether it's uh, certain thoughts, certain memories, uh, certain emotions, urges, etc. Uh, so we can put that right at the beginning, like you know, your life is like a bus, and there are all of these experiences that are in your bus kind of thing and then what we can see here is you know uh, in this choose your own adventure i mean you have loads more of options that we didn't uh, explore but basically what we're seeing here is ways where people might try to uh, control uh, or eliminate or um, uh, somehow change their thoughts um, so things like you know fighting uh, with your thoughts or fighting with your emotions, your experiences. Um, usually, you know, what what we get here is when you're engaged in a fight, then no one's actually driving, uh, driving the bus. Um, so it gives you that sort of sense of stagnation, being stuck on loop lane, as they, uh, as they call it uh, in the videos. Uh, if you placate the, uh, the passengers, so uh, if you're trying to do something different, something scary, something that's new, uh, something that you haven't done before, just something that's important, but your passengers are telling you, you know, that's quite hard. That's no, you're not good enough. You you can't do it. So, you know, by placating the passengers, you just go like, okay, you know, I won't do it then. You know, but again, you, what you lose there is that sense of vitality of what it is. You know, that's what sort of direction you want to go in in your life the sort of the the, the rush to your destination it's a bit like you know uh, and we've probably all seen those clients who sort of it's the the, the, the typical bite your lip and just uh, go th go through it kind of thing um which again it's it it loses that sense of vitality because you're so focused in sort of uh, just it's almost like proving the passengers wrong kind of thing that uh, you know, uh, as as the, the the short snippet of video saying, you're not even taking time to appreciate the the you know the how you're getting there kind of thing. So you're not uh, you're just focused on that zero in on that goal. And again, you know, once you achieve it, uh, that's it. That's for, for example. I mean, again, looking at this from um, from my uh, sort of my clinical experience, this is one of those things that you know, especially people with chronic uh, illnesses, especially things like chronic pain, tend to engage a lot is this sort of rush to your destination kind of thing, this sort of, uh, you know, just bite, it, bite your lip and sort of work through the pain kind of thing. And then a lot of times that might even, uh, you know, uh, have that sort of snapback effect that uh, then they'll, uh, they'll actually become even more tired or have more pain uh, come in and uh, increase, uh, and that will increase the, the, the sort of level of disability. So flipping the script is, okay, so what if you don't have to fight the passengers? So what if you don't have to placate? So why don't, if you don't have to rush to your destination, so what, what could you be doing? And then sort of pivot towards acceptance and willingness and being able to, rather than 
fight or interact with these passengers uh, in any way. It's more about, okay, can I carry these passengers uh, with me? So there's loads of functions that are being served here on this, sorry, on this, uh, on this metaphor. So first of all, you know, we have this sort of noticing of the unworkability of the control elimination and change uh, agenda when it comes to internal experiences. So uh, the passengers are not going to go anywhere. Your thoughts, your emotions, your memories, your urges are there, you know. Um, so trying to fight them, trying to placate them, trying to drown them out, trying to listen just to positive thoughts kind of thing, that doesn't really get rid of them so again if your focus is still trying to control or eliminate these uh, these passengers that really doesn't work they're still in your bus no matter what you do they're still in your bus you know they're still uh, up here in our uh, in our minds the other thing that the metaphor is doing is again so trying to do these things doesn't really uh, doesn't really work in terms of you know controlling the passengers in any way. Uh, and when you're trying to engage in this sort of agenda, you know, there's costs that come associated uh, with it, uh, whether it's your bus stops. So that feeling of stuckness that a lot of the clients, um, a lot of our clients have, uh, whether it's the, so the, the the loss of a sense of vitality. Uh, so being stuck on loop lane or rushing through things and not actually uh, you know, uh, taking the time, attention, and awareness to uh, to enjoy them. It also gives a sort of a glimpse into the role of fusion as a possible obstacle to to life. So, whenever you're interacting uh, with uh, with the passengers again under this sort of control, elimination, and change agenda, basically it's like you know these things are right in the forefront of everything. Uh, of your attention and everything that you do. So it's a bit like, um, you know, looking through things through sort of tinted, uh, tinted glasses. So it sort of hints at, you know, when you're very close and interacting with these passengers, trying to change them, trying to control them, you're actually you're sort of in with the passenger rather than uh, in uh, the, the sort of, in, instead of uh, sort of sitting with the passenger kind of thing. One, one of the cool things that the, the, the metaphor uh, does and that most metaphors uh, also do is this, uh, it creates a bit of diffusion by using this object of the bus, uh, by using this, um, uh, these characters of the passengers as a way of uh, objectifying or physicalizing some of these psychological uh, some of the psychological content. So uh, where, again, you're not looking from the psychological content, but you're looking at the psychological content. So you're not looking from your emotions. You're not looking from your thoughts, urges, or memories. You're looking at these experiences. So by creating this bus with these passengers that represent our thoughts, uh, we are creating a bit of that wiggle room uh, and that distance between us and the internal experiences. And at the same time, it's establishing this new relationship with these thoughts and feelings where, uh, you know, again, the, the, the whole scenery of the bus is a container and the bus as a life, uh, the bus as ourselves, as a container of all these experiences. So where we can uh, we can have all these experiences and we can also have other passengers, you know, nicer passengers, passengers that might be a bit more neutral uh, in uh, in nature, uh, but we but they they're all contained in this bus uh, type of uh, type of figure. One of the things that was not necessarily very highlighted that we, that we can do uh, uh, in the passengers on the bus uh, metaphor. So in these videos, they, did, they just had that sort of loop lane or doing something that matters kind of thing. Uh, but we can use the bus as a form of uh, linking with, uh, with values uh, where, uh, for example, I personally use a lot the, you know, so what's, what's the destination on the front of the bus where you have the destination, what's your destination? So what's important for you in your life? So what's 
what's vital for you, what's something that sort of, uh, you know, gets you up in the morning kind of thing, wanting to do things. Um, so that could also, this sense of direction and where this bus is headed kind of thing can also be integrated. And that's really sort of talking about, uh, about values. Um, the other thing that we can do is then, okay, by using this metaphor, so what if, you know, your life is not necessarily about, you know, getting the, the, the passengers to be quiet. So again, let's reframe that relationship with the, with the passengers. So the, the, the agenda here is not to get the passengers quiet. What if this is about, you know, driving to the destination that's on the front, uh, on the front of the bus? So doesn't that mean that, you know, you need to drive with these passengers, no matter how rowdy or how quiet uh, they might be? So again, trying to get a reframing of this relationship where these passengers, these thoughts, these feelings, these emotions, these uh, memories, etc., can, again, can travel with you towards uh, that uh, destination. It also clarifies the agenda for therapy uh, quite clearly. And it, when used very early on, it could be a really sort of uh, give people a, a sense, uh, an experiential sense of what therapy uh, from an act perspective looks like, uh, that this is gonna be about getting you to drive towards things that matter uh, to you, not getting those passengers uh, quiet. So again, uh, where the, the, the metric of success is uh, about engagement with valued activities, not necessarily whether the thoughts, urges, emotions, etc., have gone away, disappeared uh, in any way, shape, or form. Um, towards this end, you know, when we are talking about this and when we're, we're talking about, okay, so maybe the passengers need to come along, we're pivoting towards acceptance and willingness. You know, when you can thank your passengers uh, for them trying to warn you about something, when you can, uh, you know, carry your passengers, even though they might be a bit annoying kind of thing, we're talking about taking this sort of more accepting and willing stance to have those, uh, those uh, passengers. Uh, and at the same time, okay, so how preparing the ground for committed action. So what would it look like to turn the bus towards something that matters to you, even if it's just the slightest little turn. So what would be the, the, the again, the, slight, the, the, the tiniest little step that you could take towards something that, uh, that matters? How would that look like? How would that look like in real life? And the thing is that, so by, just by doing this, just by using this metaphor, again, we can, we can then sort of transpose this metaphor to any type of content that the client might be struggling with. So, you know, any new content. Okay, so we have here another passenger. Uh, we can uh, use it for different uh, value directions or the different areas of growth that the passenger, that the client might be uh, wanting to, to, to work. So again, it's all a question of, okay, so switching the destination. So when you're, work when you're going towards the destination what are what type of passengers tend to show up for you uh how do they look like what are uh, what are these passengers saying kind of thing so we can work again with the same framework of the metaphor uh with across all sorts of different contents across all sorts of different uh contexts uh in terms of again sharing again we're we're, we're sharing all of these points of uh, you know, what we think is happening with you is that you're stuck in this agenda of control in this agenda of trying to change these internal experiences. You're getting an experiential sense that that doesn't work because uh, you've tried, you know, fighting these experiences, placating these experiences, rush to these experiences, try to have positive thoughts, etc. And that hasn't really gotten rid of the experiences. So maybe what we can do is instead of trying to change these experiences or eliminate these experiences so what would it look like to live with these experiences but live fully with these experiences and live a vital and um uh, and um important 
life that you really want to to live a life that uh, that matters what would it look like with these experiences so these are broadly you know the the functions that are being served with one single metaphor and as you can see they sort of uh, pinpoint most of the aspects of uh, of the whole uh, of the whole uh, model so that's basically you know what i wanted to talk about today is how uh, we can use these uh, these organizing metaphors and the sort of the breadth uh, and scope that uh, that they have. So I'm very happy to take any questions from <laughs> from the audience at this uh, at this point. Thank you very much. No, no, uh, we have some questions, but actually, I wanted to start with a question myself, mm -hmm. um, because my understanding that you obviously can develop a, a range of metaphors and choose those which are more suitable for a particular client, choose in collaboration. Mm -hmm. But do you then tend to stick with the metaphor which you've chosen and sort of because with this passenger on the bus, as you've demonstrated, you can achieve so much with just that one metaphor. Or do you keep inventing new metaphors as, as you're progressing with the client? Uh, again, ACT is a very pragmatic approach. So you do what works. So if, uh, if some of these sort of more formulaic uh, metaphors, and there's quite a few of uh, these organizing metaphors, uh, there's actually a, a very good resource called the Big Book of Act Metaphors uh, for people who might be uh, interested. It's, uh, it's available on Amazon and stuff like that, uh, where you have, you know, a collection of these uh, organizing metaphors. So there's some very popular ones. So there's the passengers on the bus, there's the, um, uh, the sailing boat uh, metaphor, there's the building a house metaphor. And they all sort of serve these sort of similar functions and they're sort of uh, organizing metaphors. And, you know, if you get an, a sense that, you know, um, people are connecting uh, experientially with, uh, with these metaphors, yeah, I mean, you can use them uh, across, uh, across uh, the, whole, uh, the, the whole therapeutic process. Uh, and it's, it's a good sort of um, uh, way of, uh, again, uh, sort of connecting with people uh, at different points uh, of, uh, of the therapeutic process uh, when they might be sort of, uh, you know, if they're, they're going again sort of into experiential avoidance mode, uh, you can sort of call them out in terms of, okay, that sounds like, you know, you're struggling with your passengers again. That sounds like you're trying to placate those passengers uh, again. So what's the deal here kind of thing. So you can use that again without having to go very deeply into the content. Uh, so you can do it in a very sort of light way, uh, but getting that sort of experiential sense of, you know, when you're interacting with these uh, passengers, you know, you know what the costs are, the bus stops or the bus gets stuck on loop lane or the, uh, you know, things, uh, things like uh, things like that. So uh, you, the other thing that happens sometimes is that, you know, we can tweak the metaphor uh, and these organizing metaphors to things that are sort of more relevant to, to the client. So some clients uh, might even sort of personalize the metaphor in some ways by adding, you know, small details here and there. And again, that's absolutely fine as long as it's facilitating their connection and it's very, it's, Sorry, especially the, their experiential uh, sense of uh, what the metaphor is symbolizing there, you know, that's fine. And you can sometimes you get some very colorful buses uh, or, uh, you know, some uh, very detailed descriptions of what the passengers look like and things like that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we've got a question from Richard, um, mm -hmm. which starts with the but. So I assume it was a, an answer to something you've said. I guess it was to do with acceptance and accepting those passengers as they are. Because Richard says, but many of the people we see do make fulfilling and transformative changes to unhelpful beliefs and attitudes. So rather than just accepting, they do make changes. So what would you say to that? Uh, again, I mean, the, it's it's. It, Again, act, act is very pragmatic. So if you have uh, found a way of, you know, making changes, uh, you know, that works for you, and it's, uh, again, uh, allowing you to live a vital and connected 
life, so be it. You know, there's uh, there's nothing in the act manual that says thou shall not uh, change experiences or try to change experiences. Uh, so you know, if that's if that's if or if people you know uh, they they have some sort of uh, uh, I, I always I always think of those. Uh, self-help sort of positive self-help tapes that they used to sell in the 90s kind of thing those sort of self-affirmation things if that works for you great you know uh, if that's what uh, gets you out of bed in the morning and doing things that are vital and important for you great you know act has no uh, no problem uh, with that uh, uh, it's a, a very sort of do what works type of, uh, of model um, the, th the key thing is sort of to look out you know are people when people are using those strategies uh are those is there any cost associated uh with it because sometimes it might be that uh, it might be uh, liberating in one part of their life but at a very expensive cost in other parts uh, of their life um or things like uh, you know using those strategies um uh in a very in context insensitive way so using the same strategy uh, that works for one part of their life trying to use the same strategy for other parts of their life where it's not workable uh, in those parts of their, of their life so those are the key things that you you're going to be on the lookout for uh, just to make sure that um, you know uh, okay there's there's still workability uh, there Uh, thank you. Uh, Rona asked about the link to the videos which you've shown us, but I think it's been sorted because lots of people yeah. uh, found it and said what the name of the channel is. Mm -hmm. So if you can't find all of them, go to the channel and usually uh, you can find all the videos which that channel mm -hmm. uploaded over time. So it shouldn't be a problem. And I am uh, right. They, I, found, I found one more question because there were lots of <laughs> thanks. Um, and Vivian <laughs> asks a question which probably will take us to the midnight because it's Nunu's favorite topic <laughs> and specialist topic. Can you say more about how ACT helps with medical issue? Can it help with clients who come with pain? And I know that you you can talk about it at great length, but briefly, if if yeah. you can <laughs> just answer that, please. Yeah, I mean, very, very briefly, yes, uh, but depends on how you're how you're asking the question. Uh, if you're asking, can it help clients get rid of the pain? No. Uh, can it help clients live more vital and committed lives with the pain? Yes. Uh, and there's a plethora of, uh, of uh, research on uh, ACT uh, with chronic pain and, cr and all sorts of chronic, uh, chronic uh, medical conditions. Uh, my, actual, my actual area of expertise is more on uh, gastrointestinal, uh, uh, chronic gastrointestinal conditions, so people living with IBS, IBD, uh, so, uh, and it, yes, it does help and people get, uh, you know, uh, do uh, enjoy a, a better quality of life, which then you know, and we know this uh, mainly through, uh, we know there's a, a biofeedback uh, loop effect that when people do start engaging in uh, more uh, sort of quality of life directed sort of more uh, valued actions that does uh, have an impact on the physical uh, side uh, as well. So uh, they end up uh, experiencing less pain or less symptoms but again they're not getting rid of them but they might be experiencing less because again that sort of activation loop gets switched off or gets uh, disrupted in some way thank you and i actually have questions question to you uh, our participants if we organize with nunu a master class on act for chronic pain would it be of interest to you so if you just briefly write in the chat box whether you would want to come to a brief probably brief two hours master class on using act with chronic conditions and chronic pain uh, just please let us know whether it is of interest and the last question because i i'm sure there will be more questions but 
do please come to our three day course or at least watch the introductory course because Nuno goes into great depth uh, at the introductory course about the main principles of acts and then skills are mainly in the three day course. But the last question before we part, what about all the clients we see that don't have a sense of direction at all? Ian is asking. Yeah. So that's one of the things that we do work uh, in uh, in ACT. Uh, so getting this sense of uh, what's the what's on the what's on the front uh, of the bus, where 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 was this bus headed, kind of thing. Uh, and again, depending on the client, we might uh, use different types of techniques or uh, approaches. Uh, some clients uh, can, you know, with a bit of uh, coaxing and coaching. Uh, are able to get, you know, well, what I really wanted my life to be about was about X, Y, or Z kind of thing. Uh, some others, with some others, it might be a bit more difficult. So uh, what we use a lot in ACT is a, a bit of looking at uh, the pain and the loss that the client is experiencing and using that almost as a reverse compass uh, to what was it important? So what's what's this person really missing in their life uh, at the moment? So where's the where's the suffering uh, coming from? Is this a suffering that's related to not having enough of again X, Y, or Z? That could be the sort of the, the, the value uh, in their life. Thank you very much, Nuno. No. There's plenty of messages saying thank you for your time, for excellent presentation. And everybody who typed the reply said, yes, they want a masterclass on chronic pain. So we will discuss that. And uh, thank you again. Real pleasure to have you. And uh, we'll work with you again in June. And thank you very much for everybody who uh, participated today in, in this Thursday. Uh, the next one, I think on the 20, I, <laughs> don't quote me, I, I'm not, I'm not, I can't remember the date right now, but we have another one coming up. Uh, just keep an eye on your emails. And as always at the end, you can unmute yourself, say goodbye, and we'll stay behind. If you have any personal questions, uh, we'll be able to answer them at the very end when there's uh, the event is finished. So thank you very much. And you can unmute yourself and say your thanks and goodbye. And we'll see you soon again. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.